Look at it. It's so cute. Mm -hmm. You ready, everybody? I feel bad showing those boxes we forgot to take out. <laughs> yeah. It was, in our defense, it was still raining yesterday. Mm -hmm. It rained all day yesterday. It was supposed to stop at like noon. Cute, cute, cute. I like that. I wish we had some loose candy to put in it, but I threw some threads in there just because I thought that was still adorable. Exactly. And don't judge my bow tying abilities. <laughs> my bow tying ability is adorable and I love it. So this is what we're going to be making today. Just a little bitty stand up treat bag. I kind of had the idea to uh, make, you know, 10, 20 of these, however many trick or treaters you have or how many grandkids you have. Make these, sit them out on a table and fill them up with little wrap candies. Yep. But also obviously great for thread. Side note, if you elongate that a fair bit, you could put a wine bottle in there. Just saying. You are so smart. I'm yeah. Just saying. If you just make that twice as tall, perfect wrapping, or maybe three times as tall, perfect for a wine bottle. And the little bow would be easy to attach to the other side so you have a handle. Just saying, guys. There's lots of things that you can do with this by changing it <laughs> just slightly. Good morning, Bethany. Good morning, Sid. <laughs> All right, guys, come on over. We're going to play and we're going to have a discussion. Ooh, discussion. I love discussion. Last time I had discussion, it lasted the whole video. <laughs> well, you got 45 minutes today. All right. So, what we are doing today is we're going to make another one. Oh, my ironing went off. Oh, well. So, as you can see, I have two pieces of material fused to a piece of stabilizer. What we are using is, is this behemoth. So, there's several different things that you can use, but today we are using the Peltec 72F because it is heavyweight to make yep. it stand up and it's fusible on both sides. Like you can hear the fuse, it makes me <laughs> happy. So, double sided fusible. This is crazy heavyweight, guys. So, you will absolutely 100% have to have polyester thread and a denim needle. Those are required in order to make this mm -hmm. bag. A walking foot <clears throat> is also not. Depending on the strength of your machine, mm -hmm. not required, but highly encouraged. I will say you will also need a machine with a free arm. And what that means is this, where like a sleeve or a cup can fit over the entire mechanism. Yep. Now, we could have made this with a different type of stabilizer. There's also this lovely stuff, which is one of my favorites. So this is in our form, and this is a lot lighter, and it's made of foam, and it is awesome. Mm -hmm. So this, however, is not fusible. There is some that is feasible. Oh wait, this one is feasible. <laughs> this one is the feasible one. There's some that is feasible and there's some that is not. So if you get the feasible one, you can fuse it. If you do get the one without the feasible, you are gonna have to stitch down on top. So just pay attention to what you're getting, whether it's feasible, single-sided feasible, double-sided feasible, non-feasible. <laughs> you get my idea. So think about this with the different stabilizers. There's also medium weight that would have worked. There's lightweight that really probably would not have worked that yeah. well because it would have gone. But really, we're here to give you ideas and then you can make it your own. Yep. So we're going to start off with a basic four by four shape. So four inches. Now you can adjust that based off of whatever it is that you want to make. So Candy, wine bottle. <laughs> biscuits. I thought about making a biscuit holder. Oh, cute. Yeah. So this is just going to be a basic idea, guys. All right. So. What I have here, I'm going to turn my net, because I like cutting on this side for some reason, and I'm not sure why. Mm -hmm. So I cut my stabilizer, it is naturally 20 inches, this is a little bit longer, so what I'm going to do is actually just go in here and quickly clip off the excess so I can get a nice clean seam, and I'm buttoning that right up against my stabilizer, because mm -hmm. I can feel it. This stuff is super thick and wonderful. So is there exact dimensions we're trimming this to? Yep, we're going to trim it down to 4x4. Four four. All right, now that I've got my perfect corner, I can actually start doing my trims. So I'm going to flip this over, find my 4-inch mark. Ooh, okay, I'm going back to this side. <laughs> you got to trim up another corner. Yes, I do. <laughs> <sighs> I did this wrong. Is it just because you can't see on the black very well? Yeah. Yeah. Even that with happens. my fancy Omni Grid ruler. I did the same thing with the one that's over there. I couldn't see super duper well on the uh, black jack o' lantern faces. Like, wait a minute, can't see. <clears throat> so, four by four. So, I'm going to cut a strip that is four inches wide. And I'm not going to cut myself on live camera. <laughs> and now I'm going to make panels that are four inches by four inches. I need four of them since the box has four sides. I feel like I'm teaching kindergarten math, guys. It's fun. 
I think you would be suited to teach kindergartners. I, kids. I feel like that would be exhausting to do every day, though. Yeah, I would do that for like two days and be like, okay, I'm done. People that teach children are truly amazing, I think. Yes, they are, and they deserve a massive, massive pay raise. Agree. So, like she said, she's cutting four of these 4 by 4s and they are fused with that 72F stabilizer in the middle and a different cute fabric on each side. And what's the bottom going to be? Another 4 by 4 square. Okay, so five of those total. So you really only need four inches of the uh, 72F stabilizer if Wait. that's the size you're making. And of course you can make this bigger or smaller dependent on your needs. We're probably going to say that a lot. <laughs> you can use this as a coaster at this point. Uh, yeah. Put some binding on it and you've got a coaster. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm going to get on the left side of your needle. Okay. Oh, this one does not have a brand new bit of needle on it. Mm. Hold on. I'll be right back, guys. <laughs> Tell them about the project a little bit more. Tell them about next week. Who's night nurse coming? I don't know what she's doing. Uh, I think she's <laughs> okay, so this week we're making a stand-up treat bag. She's using four by four pieces of fabric, but you can, of course, make this any size. I put little uh, threads in here because we don't have any candy, but that's the idea. Candy, threads, wine, just a really simple uh, little container that stands up on its own. Next week we are going to be featuring uh, Chris Eichner. She has taught here many, many times. She's taught thread painting. She's taught confetti quilting. And I'm fairly certain, if Bethany is correct, that next week Chris Eichner will be doing confetti quilting here with us. And the following week, you guys get a good little preview. See how well I can do this one-handed. Bethany made little tote bags, little trick-or-treat bags. <clears throat> and... A Christmas version. So two weeks from now, we'll be making really, really, really simple tote bags. And I will post little schedules of all of that. They're going to be adorable, and a lot of shops are going to where you have to bring your own bag. Yeah. Because plastic is real hard to find right now, guys. <clears throat> okay, so I have a jeans size 100. And yes, you really do need something that large. Yep, yeah, just to get through the thickness of that stabilizer. You thick. And always check your packages of stabilizer. They all come with little sheets that will tell you what you need and what is recommended. Mm -hmm. Generally follow the recommendations. They're pretty good. And I like to, if I have a bunch of different stabilizer, I like to uh, staple the instructions to those so I can tell them apart because they're all very similar, especially when you have just little slices of them. Oh, yeah. Those are the best to work with. All right, threaded, ready to go. I promise, guys, we do play with our baby locks. We just happen to pick the burnings more often than not. Mm -hmm. Two weeks from now, we can definitely use a baby lock for your tote bags. Oh, we will be. We'll be using the Aria. Because <laughs> that's my machine. Yeah, today we are using the Bernina 590. Yep. One of my personal favorites. Okay. Second so, favorite. <laughs> this over here. So what I'm going to do, real quick, I'm going to make the decision, do I want my cats on the outside or do I want my bats on the outside? Let's do the cute cats. I like that purple fabric. Or do I want to do the thing? Oh, every other one. Uh -huh. Yeah, do that. So I'm going to lay out my pieces. And because they're fused, I really don't have to worry about them shifting. And we're doing right sides together. Yep. And I always reach back here for the lever on this one, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. So you just drop it down. And so, 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 so. And we're doing this with a quarter inch seam. Quarter inch. And then real quick before I go over it again, I just want to make sure I got everything and that I didn't weevil off. Mm -hmm. That's a horrible word, <laughs> but it's a good word. And I'm just going to go in here and do it again because you really want to reinforce these seams since I'm going to be turning it right side out. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And that's another reason that you want to use polyester thread is because it is much stronger than a cotton thread, much less brittle. Yes, it is. So now I'm going to open it up and I'm going to take my next panel, place it right sides together in this case. Which that's not. Yeah, it is. Because when you open it, it's going to look like that. Your seams here and your seams out here. Shush. See, I don't want to let you mess up. This is why I keep you. It's too early in the morning for this, guys. That's, here's your right side. Eek. <laughs> oh my goodness. And right side. It's so much there. easier when I have all the same colors. 
Yeah. Also, I have not had a single drop of coffee this morning. I'm blaming that. <laughs> Happens to everybody. Let's be honest here. We have all picked out a giant side of a quilt because we did something like that. Y'all wonder why I keep sitting around. She's smart. She keeps me hit steady in the mornings. See? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And we're going over it a second time just to reinforce that seam. Yes, we are. These are also real. I want to make one of these, and I want to make it out of, like, makeup brush stuff. Oh, I wish we way. had makeup fabric. That would be so cute and stand-up brushes in it. There you go. <laughs> so early in the morning, guys. All right, and... I feel like we're going to finish this project before 10. Oh, we definitely will. Actually, the next part's kind of a pain, so we'll see. Okay. But it's not, like, the biggest pain in the world. I'm willing to do it this early in the morning, so... If you guys can't tell, this time, uh, this week, I had an idea, but then I made Bethany do it. <laughs> she did. I figured it out, though. I'm real proud of myself for figuring this one out. Okay, so now I have all four of my panels. The next logical step is to join these two together, but that is wrong. Ask me why that's wrong. Spinning in the bottom at this point is impossible. So what we're going to actually do, and I discovered this yesterday. Is we're going to come in here and we're going to trim off some of, of that bulk. That bulk. Because otherwise it stays way too thick. Now you want to be beyond careful that you are not trimming your seam. Because mm -hmm. if you trim your seam, you're going to have to go back and redo it. And I guess we could have done that with like an eighth inch seam but yeah. it seems easier to just go back and cut it honestly it really is i hate trying to maintain an eighth of an inch on a seam allowance without jumping off yep so we're just trimming up really close to the seam that we just made but making sure not to cut into it this is why you need some good sharp scissors guys mm -hmm. And this is just taking out a lot of the bulkiness so that it'll be easier to sew in the bottom and easier to turn this right side out since we are using such a heavy uh, stabilizer. Yep. Gosh, Got 36 watching. Good morning, everyone. Happy weekend. Good morning, guys. How's everybody feeling with all the fall? Oh, happy fall. I forgot to tell everyone that. Yeah. It's officially the best season of the year. And it's almost October. My birthday's in like a week. Yes, it is. Love it. Okay. Cute. I like the fabrics you chose. I really love this little cat fabric. I love the cat. It's so cute. And you notice that I chose fabric that is non-direct, well, kind of directional, yeah. except for that one. But you know what? I can care. It looks good. A child is not going to care. All right. So now I need to decide which piece I want as the bottom of my bag. Do I want the bats or do I want the cats? I think I want the bats. Mm-hmm. Bats, I say, as it is clearly. As spiders. You said that earlier, too. I think I should have gotten you a coffee instead of a sweet tea this morning. <laughs> I need coffee, guys. This is too early in the morning. So what I want to do, we are going to be doing a lot of gymnastic work, and you're going to be using your hands a lot. So <laughs> go ahead and give them a good pop. You're going to lay this out one side down, and we're going to go in quarter inch seam again. Right about here. Stop. Lift. Now I'm going to come in again. Hello. You see our <laughs> box. And you can see it. And I went a little bit too far. I did that last time. So how cool would this be if somebody oh this is I want to do this now. The last two stitches. What if somebody sewed rainbow nine patches and made a Rubik's Cube? holder that would be amazing Ooh, i want to do that now <laughs> i have to figure out how to make the corners really sharp once you turn it right ways out but i really want to so do that you want to come in here pop for the rubik's cube holder you'd use the other one it'll give you a way better different stabilizer yeah yeah like a lighter stabilizer oh i want to do that now yeah if you want real sharp corners you're gonna have to do a much lighter stabilizer i have a nerdy dad i feel like he would like that and this is where the walking foot will come in handy, guys. Because mm -hmm. this is a ton. A lot of, of thickness for your machine right to be now. pulling through. The 590 has a built-in walking foot, but you can also purchase a uh, walking foot for whatever machine that you are sewing on. Correct. Now I'm going to come over here again. 
line that up. You are so fantastic. You're not going to need that free arm until the last seam, right? Correct. And the binding, of course. Okay. And like I said, this is a very handsy project, so you're going to have to have some good hand strength. Unless you use a different type of stabilizer. Mm-hmm. Scissors. Yeah, so this is a heavyweight fusible, I think. And then? We don't have any medium weight fusible in, but I would like to try now. that. I want to do that Rubik's Cube idea. <laughs> <laughs> and this stuff is really easy to mold, which is why I'm having so much, so little struggle with it. Mm -hmm. Is that it's just very easy to maneuver. Maneuver and manipulate. I hope you heard that. Maneuver. Maneuver. This is... Bethany English before coffee. Isn't <laughs> it fun, guys? All right. Gizzers. All right. Let's see where we're at with this box now. So now, I just have one seam left. One seam. And you notice that I'm busy over here pinching and maneuvering it mm -hmm. against my tum tum. <laughs> Gotta use the table tum. works as well. <laughs> table works. Tummy works. Whatever works. Whatever gets you the result you need. Oh, you don't even need the free arm for that either. Nope. No, you just need it to get the binding on the top edge. Okay. Or, All right. Sorry, guys. This is legit the weirdest, awkwardest thing to film. Yeah, it's heavy. Oop. I, I got that in the way. Sorry. It's okay. Yeah. There we go. Boy, thanks. Scissors. And because I want to go over that last seam one more time. Mm hmm. Everybody else got the double treatment. This one's getting the double treatment. For sure. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my foot loose. Foot Hi, loose. <laughs> on Hyundai shoes. Did you say Hyundai shoes? Yes. Because I always was saying that as a child. <laughs> and it just kind of stuck. Love it. I did that one time as a child. Okay, so as you can see here, I clearly went off. Mm -hmm. It's not the biggest deal in the world, you guys. Just seam rip a checked. little inch or so back and then do it again. Pretty much. And that's, again, just because we're wrestling this through the machine. Another thing that would make that easier is if our bag was just bigger because then we would have more space to get those seams Correct. in there. But honestly, <laughs> this is just as easy. I just think it's so cute. I love this for putting, you know, like three or four cookies or a handful of little wrapped candies or thread. Why not? Let's be honest here. This is going to end up living in my dresser and it's going to become a change pouch. Mm -hmm. You know, when you empty your pocket at the end of the day and it's like, oh, here's all the change. Mm, yeah, true. The nation wouldn't have a change shortage if I took my change to the coin star. Uh-huh. But if you save your change throughout the year and then at Christmas you put it in, usually you have about $300 worth of change. Goodness. Not if you don't use cash. That's true. Okay. So, now I clearly have my cue. What, someone asked what foot we're using this. Number 57, the quarter inch foot with a guide. Now, normally, I sh I pr if you're on a different machine that's not strong, I'm trying to say this politely, guys. If you are on a light machine, then you need to use your walking foot. If you're mm -hmm. on a heavy machine then you can use pretty much a standard foot. Mm -hmm. And honestly, you know your machine well. If your machine's struggling, stop. Put on your walking foot. Mm -hmm. It's not a vanity thing, I promise, guys. So okay. now I'm literally just wrestling this inside out. Cute. And I love pocket. it. And this is a good time to have a uh, little a dowel thing. or a purple thing just to push all those corners out. It's so cute. I like and that you did do the, the mixed fabric. I like this. And once it starts going, it's automatically going to, you're going to hear it like automatically pop into place because it's going to go. <laughs> it's kind of like when you're canning and it goes pop and it's wonderful. <laughs> I and love it. And it's kind of rounded. You can finger press it if you want your corners to be sharper, of course. Yes, you can. Or uh, press open those interior seams, I guess. Cute. There we go. So from here, I would do a top stitch around mm -hmm. the edge just to hold everything in place. And then you can put on your binding. Yay. I love it. That's so cute. 
and binding is going to be exactly what I showed you guys the other week except the only difference is that I didn't sew it on one side and then pull it out and sew it down. I just went ahead and pressed it pretty much like this, pinned it in place a few places and top stitched, if and that makes sense. And then tie the bow where the join is. Let's see what time it is. It's 9.36. You want to talk to them for a minute and I can yep. press them binding. Hi guys. So look at it. It's so cute. I love this it's so adorable so i was using for those of you who are just joining i was using a jeans needle size 100 we're using the super heavy duty double-sided stabilizer peltex and a bernina 590 so if you're using a lightweight machine you want to use your walking foot if you're using a heavyweight machine you can try it without the walking foot and you might get a good result but you know your machine well cut off a small sample piece of that stabilizer and test sew it. See what your machine wants. And this is also a really good way of trying out new things and seeing what your machine can do. So, look at it, it's so cute. This really is gonna sit on my dresser and become my change cup, I can already see it. So the inside is a little bit on the meh side with the exposed seam. So if you really want to, you before you flip it out, you can go over and do a zigzag stitch over the top of each seam in order to hide all the raw edges. Or if you don't really mind, <laughs> I don't. It's gonna have goodies. It's in gonna it. have goodies in it. And let's be honest here, if anyone's looking that closely at your project, they're not allowed to look at it anymore. <laughs> look at it, it's so cute. I really like this one. So it's a really simple thing to do. I love that little black bow. It's so cute. Sydney did such a good job on it. Yeah, I cut this one shorter so they're, I, it's like 30 inches long instead of 40 inches so that it won't be so big. Also, good morning, everybody. Keep talking. I got like one more minute before this is pressed. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, next week we're going to have Chris Eichner on. She's going to do some amazing videos with us. And then the following week, we're going to be doing my really cute, simple tote bags with and without stabilizer, though I did use batting in one of them. Now, those are actually going to be sitting in store for the next two weeks. So if you want to come look at them, feel free. And those are actually really nice little bags. You can change the size and adjust it very easily by whatever it is you want it to be. I personally made a ton of those and I take them to the grocery store with me, especially Aldi because I ain't paying 25 cents a bag mm -hmm. when I can just as easily make one. I'm disgusted. Ugh. Honestly, I kind of hate reusable plastic. I hate plastic bags like that. I love the reusable bags. Mm -hmm. So, same. Because the plastic bags just end up in the bag and then that bag ends up shoved into a corner and you just continually add to that stupid plastic bag. Or under my sink forever. Yeah, that too. Okay. Alright guys, Trading trading places. places. <laughs> Wasn't that a CLC show? Uh, yes, Trading Spaces. Mm. Which I missed that. That was the one that uh, Ty Pennington was on. It was right. a good show. Yes, it was. Yeah. Alright, so I'm starting in the center of the binding that I just cut on one of the centers of one of the sides. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think my words make a lot of sense this morning either, and I'm just pinning about once per side. And again, what I did, I this was a two inch wide piece of fabric. I folded to the center and then folded one more time, starched a little bit and pressed. Starch is your friend, guys. If you're ever having issues with your material, trying to wander, starch it down. That's one of the reasons why I absolutely adore working with Batik mm -hmm. is because the wax is so naturally starch-like that it's so stiff and it does not move. Agree. But once you wash it, it's gone, so. And anything like that I use heavily. I always think it's funny. Robin always says that you should use 505 like you use cooking spray. And I'm like, yeah, I use a lot of both. <laughs> <laughs> I also use a lot of starch. Exactly. Whenever I use 505, I kind of tease my mother. I'm like, I'm trying to make 1970s fair faucet hair. All right, so we're pinned in place, and then right here is going to be where either we make our bow or we top stitch them onto each other. And I think I'm actually going to do that because that way I'll be able to show the lazy fold yeah. method of finishing binding. Go for it. All right. Guys, in case you're wondering, I still hate binding. <laughs> and I still love it. Mm -mm. Ooh, do I want to use this quarter inch foot? No. I got a 1D over there. Perfect. That's what I want. Still feed. That's One of the it. best features about Bernina is the built-in walking foot. Okay. I'm a lazy person. <laughs> See me reaching back there too. We all do and it because we're, we're so used to it. Down. Okay. 
So we switched over to our 1D, which is one dual feed if you have a Bernina. And I'm going to change my presser foot pressure as well. On this machine, it's about 50. On a machine with a knob, it's maybe a quarter of the way down. Just because this is, again, a lot of thickness to go through. Yes, it is. I, think I need to turn it down a little bit more. And how I know that is I can see bunching right there. If you're ever sewing binding on and that's bunching up right now, you need lower presser foot pressure. So I'm actually going to go to about 30 and see what that does. And remember, I always say my very first project of whatever I make is kind of like the first pancake off the stove. It kind of mm -hmm. goes to the dog because yeah. you're getting your barons for that yeah, day. Right. Oh, yeah, I just sewed a little uh, lump into it, but that's okay. Yeah. And nobody is perfect right off the bat, and if they are, don't believe them. Yeah, I like that. Gosh, this is so cute. I'm so excited for this. Oh my god, it would, Colleen. Colleen's like an orange or green binding. What else will it do? Ooh, I should have done that. I just have this black handy. Okay, <laughs> y'all didn't know black was our favorite color. <laughs> yeah, probably not wrong. All right, and what I'm going to do now, that one I kind of just trimmed down. This one I'm going to fold under like that. Probably should press it, but we're just going to wing it. And then see, we're going to top stitch here and you'll have a little finished edge. All the raw edges are on the inside. Makes it easy because you know me. I hate anything like that. Hi, Bee Bear. <laughs> oh, <pass. laughs> okay. Interesting. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> Things that happen on stitch witchery. If that ever happens, it generally means your needle was not tight enough. Bethany. Or that you've been working on heavy heavy projects and it has a bad habit of just being enough friction to undo those things because yeah. <laughs> i know quite a few people have done that while they're working on heavy duty stuff especially mask we had a lot of people do that during mask making mm -hmm. and it did not work in their favor but look at it that's so simple why did i not think of that See, now I'm struggling. You struggling? Are you on the struggle bus right now? That's what it is. I mess up once and then I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can get this now. You can do this. <laughs> Thank you. Also, guys, sorry for the camera work. I am not a camera woman. Yeah, neither am I, but. Oh, I love it. Just the bottom of the bag is adorable. Okay, we're forcing that one through, but it's finished. <laughs> That's the key. Finished is good, guys. Beautiful. We're going to pretend that's perfect. It is perfect. <laughs> and don't let anyone and tell you otherwise. Like to press this a little bit like that so that it'll stand up a little bit flatter. Yep. And you can also work on pressing out these corners. But and if you really is. want to, you can go hit it with an iron and it will help mm -hmm. it. But there's our little basket. Basket. So super simple. So these are, that took what, 15 minutes grand total to do? Oh, yeah. Like, this is a very easy, easy, easy gift basket to hand over. Put some apples in there. Put some candy in there. Oh, put a, a bottle of wine. apple. Yes. It fit perfect in that. And this is just the basic size. So you can really go in there and change out the size. Do anything you need to do. Yeah, that's not Just my best binding at all. Let's not look at it too close. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, guys. It happens to all of us. So we do have two really cute baskets. Remember, if you're making anything bigger than a 6x6 six six square, you will need to throw some quilting on it in order to hold it in place if it's not fusible. Mm -hmm. And play with the different fusibles because there's a lot of really, really cute good ones mm -hmm. and tons and tons of stuff to try. Ooh, and I bet if you used a lightweight fusible, you could also make it into like a little cinch bag. Yes, you could. Cute. That's actually going to be one of the classes coming up as a basic drawstring bag. Nice. I also want to say, so we've got Chris Eichner next week where you have your tote bags the following week. I think I want to go ahead and say the week after that, I want to do a quilt as you go. Okay. I have hot pads on the way and quilt as you go. Hot pads are a real simple start. Ooh, and one. pixie for you. <laughs> the answer to that one is it is a 72F Peltex, two-sided fusible, ultra-firm stabilizer in white. 
and I cut a nine inch strip, which clearly has enough to net me another bag. So, all right guys. Thank you so much. I think Join that's me. it. So y'all have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her, she's so cute. All right, we will see you next week. See you next week, bye. bye.